Okay, uh, posterior pituitary. Very different style. Um, posterior pituitary, uh, we've mentioned this one before, this should be a little bit of review. We've said that the posterior pituitary stores hormones that the hypothalamus makes. So if we just look at the, the way that, um, that these things are laid out, so here's the hypothalamus up in this region inside the brain, and the pituitary gland hangs down beneath it. The posterior pituitary gland it has a direct connection to the hypothalamus. So there are some axons that extend from the hypothalamus directly down into the posterior pituitary. And the two hormones that get stored here, we've seen these before, this is review, um, antidiuretic hormone. And this is one that can go and act on the kidneys to help prevent uh, water loss from the body. So it facilitates reabsorption of water in the kidneys. And the other hormone, again, review, oxytocin. This is the hormone that stimulates contractions during childbirth. It does a couple of other things as well that we're going to be a little bit more focused in on in, in this chapter. Um, it stimulates, so the contractions of the uterus, that's one thing. It also can... Uh, stimulates contractions elsewhere and particularly in the mammary glands um, facilitates contractions of those glands and so that helps to cause the milk to be released from the gland. Okay so uh, that kind of brings up an interesting note we said we said on the previous slide well prolactin is secreted by the anterior pituitary. Prolactin causes milk to be made. Um, oxytocin is important for allowing that milk to be released. So these two hormones have to work together. Oxytocin is something that is, uh, again, it's stored in the posterior pituitary. It's not like it's just always being released necessarily. There has to be some sort of a stimulus that causes it to be released. And it is actually the baby sucking um, that, that sends a, a sensory neuron signal up to the brain. And then the hypothalamus causes the posterior pituitary to release oxytocin. And that oxytocin travels through the bloodstream, uh, it causes milk to be released. So for those of you who are moms out there, you're already familiar with this. If you've ever nursed a baby, um, it's not like an instant, it's not like drinking from a straw. It's not like milk is instantly available. It's something the baby has to start sucking and then there's a little bit of a lag, a little bit of a delay. And that's just because it takes some time for oxytocin to circulate through the body and make it to the mammary glands and cause that milk to be released. So, um, on that note, you know, let's tie in with the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus controls both lobes of the pituitary gland, both the anterior and posterior. Let's just look at that in a little bit more detail here. So the posterior pituitary, what we've just been talking about, um, again, that's got a direct connection to the hypothalamus. So these axons descend directly into the, hypo into the posterior pituitary and allow these two hormones to be released. The anterior pituitary, this one is also controlled by the hypothalamus, but in a different way. Um, so there's not a direct connection with axons into the anterior pituitary, rather, it goes something like this. Okay, so up here in the hypothalamus, there are axons that descend down to this area is called the median eminence. That name is right here. And um, those axons carry hormones. So hormones get transported down the axons and they get released in the median eminence. And then there are capillaries. There's a capillary bed right there at the median eminence. And that capillary bed leads directly to another capillary bed in the anterior pituitary. So there is a direct connection through the bloodstream right there, just through these capillary beds. So anyway, the hormones um, from the hypothalamus get released right there and they travel through the blood bloodstream and cause the anterior pituitary to do what it does. So um, the hypothalamus has many different hormones it can release. All these little green dots are representing hormones. Um, there are many different types of hormones. Let me just show you a table here. Okay, so these are hormones that the hypothalamus produces and then they can travel to the anterior pituitary through the bloodstream and cause the anterior pituitary to secrete hormones. So this is like a whole chain of hormones. Um, hypothalamus produces hormones that influences the anterior pituitary and then anterior pituitary releases hormones that go and affect other target organs throughout the body. So this is truly the endocrine system. It's, it involves a lot of interconnections, um, interconnected sections throughout the body. Um, so anyway, we're, we're, we can refer to this table on an as-needed basis, but just to point out a couple as an example, 
Um, so the hypothalamus produces what's called corticotropin releasing hormone. What this is going to do is cause the anterior pituitary to release adrenocorticotropic hormone, which we're going to see a little bit later. This is the hormone that acts on um, the adrenal glands. Okay, uh, let's just look at one other here. I think on the next slide we're going to have gonadotropin releasing hormone. Um, so this is one that is, again, produced by the hypothalamus, travels through the capillary beds down to um, the anterior pituitary, and at the anterior pituitary it causes these two hormones to be released, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. So those will go then, travel through the bloodstream, and influence what the gonads are doing. So that brings us to the topic of feedback control. We've got um, these sorts of chains of molecules that are influencing each other, chains of, of organs that are influencing each other, and um, there has to be some way to control the release of these different substances. So um, this forms what's called an axis. So we've been talking about what the hypothalamus does. The hypothalamus produces hormones that then influence the anterior pituitary, which then produces hormones that influence other organs. Um, so there's like a three, um, a three system link here, three member link, um, and together they are called an axis. So in the case of gonadotropin releasing hormone okay, produced by the hypothalamus, again, that will make the anterior pituitary produce gonadotropins. Those circulate throughout the body, and when they make their way to the gonads, they cause the gonads to release sex steroid hormones. Okay, once there are sex steroid hormones circulating in the bloodstream, there are two things that can do. Um, number one, okay, that concentration of sex steroids, that can exert a direct negative feedback onto the anterior pituitary. It causes the anterior pituitary to, um, to not be as sensitive to gonadotropin releasing hormone. So consequently, the anterior pituitary is gonna stop secreting so many gonadotropins. So that's a negative feedback loop. It's going to um, cause the escalation of sex steroids to, to stop and to level off. The other thing that's shown here on the slide is that um, there's another type of negative feedback. There are actually two sorts of levels of negative feedback control that are possible in this axis. Um, so the sex steroid hormones that are produced, that's like the end product of this whole system. Again, those are circulating throughout the blood and those actually go and influence the hypothalamus directly as well. Causes the hypothalamus to stop secreting its hormone, gonadotropin releasing hormone. So two different levels of negative feedback control are possible here. All right, so uh, next up, we're gonna look at the adrenal glands, which let me just scroll back for one second here. Again, the adrenal glands are also um, ultimately stimulated by what the hypothalamus is doing. Corticotropin releasing hormone is produced by the hypothalamus that travels to the anterior pituitary and causes the anterior pituitary to release adrenocorticotropic hormone. Um, this is gonna circulate through the bloodstream and make its way to the adrenal gland. So that's where we're gonna get go going to pick up next.